everyone and welcome back. It's been a bit, hasn't it? It's been a while since I posted. Probably not actually because I pre-record. But anyway, that's not important to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking- wow, that was big. Okay, I'm spastic. Woo okay. Today I'm going to be talking about books I've read because of the online book community. Especially when it comes to booktube and bookstagram. I tend to get a lot of books that I read from there. Just because I like as they get more hyped, you get to see them more and more. And some of them turned out really, really good, and some of them did not. So today we're going to be discussing which books I've gotten from the hype and whether they stand up to it. One of the most recent books that I read because of Bookstagram posts that I've seen, uh, specifically because of Carrie the Book Bell, I remember seeing it a lot and she really, really liked the book, is The Unhoneymooners. And I actually own a physical copy. I just can't find it because I took it on vacation. Are you noticing a pattern with my videos? I'm always missing a book or two. Okay, so The Unhoneymooners. Does it live up to the hype? It was witty, it was fantastic, it was hilarious. There were a few parts where I was like, okay, this part could be over by now, but it was, they were few and far between. And it was a great b book to read on vacation, which I highly recommend if you're gonna be on vacation, bring The Unhoneymooners with you. It was fantastic to read and on the plane I was so enthralled and literally three hours had gone by by the time I finished it and I looked up and I was like wow I'm halfway to my destination nice does it live up to the hype yes <laughs> the next book we're gonna be judging is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare I know that there are a lot of people who love the shadow hunters and to be fair I have not read most of the series I have read books one and two and I have been read book one of the Infernal Devices, perhaps? The Clock- I've read the Clockwork Angel one. And it is... okay. The characters I can't really relate to in some respects, but the plot is very good, I will give it that. I like the plot, except for part of it. The plot is very intriguing, I love the idea of the Shadow Hunters and the whole universe that it's out there, and how it's built into our world. I am a sucker for urban fantasy. So, for City of Bones, I will give it. Does it live up to the hype? We are going to say yes. <laughs> Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. I read this backwards. I read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom first, and I hadn't realized that there was another series that you're supposed to read before that. <laughs> so I feel like I haven't seen really the connection except for they're all Grisha. Um, but so far, I feel like because I went from Leigh Bardugo's last writings and went back to her first ones that the writing quality kind of was is a little more feeble. Overall I'm not truly impressed so we're gonna give a point to the meh column. Sorry Shadow and Bone. So this one I bought solely because of booktube and bookstagram, mainly bookstagram because I saw a lot of posts and it is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I had just finished reading Leia on the offbeat and I was like yeah Becky Albertalli now I haven't read this yet, so I can't accurately judge it, but I have heard of very mixed opinions on it. Um, and so I'm going to actually have to read it to find out, but I did buy it because of the booktube hype and the bookstagram hype. And so, do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments. That was the cheesiest call to action I've ever said. I need to go closer to the camera. There we go. Focus on me! I'm the center of attention! Next up on our list is none other than... Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I read this right when I was getting into the very first look of Bookstagram. I think around my second, my second post, I read this and I was not impressed. The characters kind of fell flat for me. I wasn't really interested in either of the love interests and it just felt kind of the for me. I've never read the sequel. I've never read the rest of the series, and I'm impressed that they're still going, actually. No shade to those who like this, but it just wasn't for me. Didn't hold my attention, so we're going to have to put it in the meh column. However, you can see some of my first posts do have Red Queen featured, because I was so concerned about having an unpopular opinion at the beginning of my bookstagram adventure that I did feature it. Um, but yeah, now I'm not afraid, so there we go. Now this one I specifically bought because I knew I was going to meet the author at Yale West, and that is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. Colbert, Col I know I'm going to pronounce it wrong because in her Twitter bio it says I don't pronounce my last name like you think I did. Like I, you think I do, so it's probably wrong. I'm very sorry. So Little and Lion, 
I knew that I was going to be meeting her. I even have her signature right here. And it was so nice to meet her. She's such a lovely human being. And I really did like this book. I read it right before I went to LA for Y'all West. It was just such an emotionally charged book. And I really connected with the main character and her worries and her doubts and just she seemed she was super relatable. I loved her thought process. She thinks very much the way that I do. And so I really and really enjoyed reading Little Unlion and while it's not one of my like overall favorites, it's definitely really up there. Little and Glion gets a yes column. Woo! Okay, you all have heard of this book, and it is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. If you haven't heard of Red, White, and Royal Blue, I suggest you go on Twitter and type in book Twitter, because it is bound to pop up within the first 20 posts, I bet. I'm probably wrong, but whatever. I was lucky enough to read a copy of Red, White, and Royal Blue as an ARC, and then the lovely Bookish Constellations got me the, an actual copy so I could see the differences, and it was definitely a five-star read. I made a whole blog post about it that you can see. I'll link it in the description, but it was beautifully written. It was emotionally charged action-packed. I was following along every single second. I was like, I need to go home and read this book. Like, it was, I was at school and I was like, I wonder if I can bring this book to school. I wonder if anyone will notice I'm reading this book quietly in the corner. I really recommend it. So this book, Red, White, and Royal Blue, goes in the yes column. <laughs> Yay. This book, I think, was more on book Twitter and booktube than bookstagram, but it's definitely on there and it's one of the newer ones that you guys have definitely been seeing around. And this book is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna assume that if you're watching this, maybe you've seen one of my other videos. If you've seen my most recent video of my May wrap up, you have seen me talking about Aurora Rising, and most likely you saw me talking about how much I love Aurora Rising. It is so good. What a bookish squad. I love them. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's just constantly my mood on this channel. Like, I'm just freaking out over books. Aurora Rising was so good. It was I was so glad I saw it on Twitter. People were starting to freak out over it. And I was like, I need to be on this. So I was counting down the days till it came out. Not as an arc. Um, it was just so good, and I, I love these authors. I'll buy anything these authors write together. Um, they're in my Insta buy. I'm very, very excited to put Aurora Rising in the yes column. <laughs> and I just damaged it. This book I saw a lot of on Bookstagram, but maybe that's because it's the circles I'm running in. And this is A Thousand Perfect Notes by C.G. Drews. And if you check out my blog, you can see an interview I have with C.G. Drew. She's such a delightful human being, and like, I love her. I love her blog. I love her personality. Her, she's hilarious. I'm cracking up of her bookstagram posts all the time. And I also love her book, A Thousand Perfect Notes. It was heart-wrenching. I read it at sleepaway camp, and my bunkmate came back to find me sobbing over this book in my bunk. She's like, why weren't you out hiking? Why are you crying in a bunk all alone? And I was like, I... I just read this. You need to read it. Um, so, warned, it is heart-wrenching. You will cry, but it is so good. And I don't know how she manages to pack so much feeling and lovingness and just, ah, feels into this book, but she does. And I'm embarrassed to say I still have to read her next book because I haven't gotten a chance yet. And they don't have it at my library. So we're working on that, folks. I keep requesting it. But a thousand perfect notes is going to go into the yes column. So I know a lot of people don't like this book. I have heard some things about people not liking it, but it was the first college-based book that I've ever read, and it holds a very warm spot in my heart, and I'm going away to college this fall, and I'm really nervous, and all of the library books I have checked out right now take place in college just to like get myself mentally prepared. So this book is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, Rowell, Rowell. I don't know. I even saw her live at BookCon and I still don't know. It was so good to see her live. She's such a funny human being. Um, I just really liked this book. It gave me hope for college. It made me a little less nervous. I'm way more extroverted than Kath and I'm a little bit more outgoing, but 
It still gives me hope that if a book nerd like her can get through college, I too, as a book nerd, can also get through college. And hopefully there will be a cute boy involved. Fangirl goes into the yay column. I'm pretty sure all of us have heard of this book series. And if you haven't, you probably, you may, you may be a little bit new. But I was here for Soapgate. That was right when I came into the community. Literally three days after I signed up for a Twitter, Soapgate happened. And that was my intro to the book community. So yikes. But also, <laughs> this book is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This actually might be one of my first reads as a bookstagrammer because I did start my journey out on bookstagram which I do have some tips coming for new bookstagrammers on my blog which will be posted on Sunday I believe Saturday or Sunday right as I started as a bookstagrammer this is one of the first books I read because it's the one that everyone was hyping up I think there was the third book was coming out during my time joining it was really good I still reread it it's pretty worn down I don't know if you can see the pages are faded it's a little bit worn out because the world brings me such comfort. I love going to the land of Prethian, Prethian, Prethian. Prethian. I love going to the land. I still don't know which court I would be in. It's a constant external, internal, internal. It's a constant existential. It's a constant crisis. I don't know which court I would be in. Dawn court, day court, night court. I don't know. Probably not spring court, but. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Someone help me. Akotar goes into the yes column. So far, I think the yes column is winning that they do wear live up to the hype rather than the knots. But let's continue. We still got a few more. The next one I have, you can obviously tell I really like because I just flung my hands out. The next one I have is the Foxhole Court. The Foxhole Court, all for the game series. I just read these a week ago. I read the first book, The Foxhole Court and I inhaled it on the plane ride. This was right after I read The Unhoneymooners. So I was really in like a book daze after reading both of those books. So I read The Foxhole Court on the plane and almost didn't want to get off the plane because I was too involved in reading it. And that was like a five hour flight, so that's impressive right there. I was like, I don't know, I have to wait for the library to give me my ebook. But then I couldn't wait because I was way too invested in the series and I bought the other two as ebooks. I inhaled the series in three days. Um, I was at a writing retreat and ended up getting no writing done because I was too busy reading these books. But I had seen them on blogs and bookstagram, yeah. I haven't seen it as much on booktube, but I'm sure they're out there, I just haven't been paying attention. Now I'm paying attention because, wow, holy cow, amazing. I'm an Exe fan now, I want to watch it. Anywho, the Foxhole Court goes all the way to the top of the S column. The next book I bought because of the hype is one that I've seen actually a bit controversial on book Twitter, and I got it solely from book Twitter and a bit from bookstagram, and that is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Dugan. It looks really funny. I love the blurb. I love the idea of the hot dog mascot. But I have heard that it is a bit problematic. I'm not sure if that's true or not, so don't take my word for it at all. I haven't read it yet to see. Um, but I did buy this solely off of the hype. I went and bought it the day it came out because I was so excited. And then I got to Yellow West and, or something happened and I was so distracted by other books. The illustrations are really beautiful. I love the cover. Um, so we're still going to see if this turns out into the yes or no column. Based on what I've heard, it's in the no, but I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to add a point to it because I haven't read it for myself. Next on our list is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This is a mystical voice made for adventure, narration, yes, absolutely. Anywho, Strange the Dreamer I got fairly quickly because it sounded right up my alley. I love the world building in it, even to the point where I wrote a five page essay on it for my AP Lit class. <laughs> Why it deserves the medals given to it and why it deserved to be on the bestseller list and it so does I wish I still had that essay because I would literally just like here read it but I do recommend it especially if you like the fantasy world building and the secret powers and all of that it's really really good so strange the dreamer 
does go into the yes column. Yes! Woo! Yay! And for our last book, is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? Prepare your seats, buckle in. You prepared? You prepared? Ha! Psych! There was another book hiding under it. Psych! That's not the last book. This is the second to last book, not the last one. And it is one of my all-time favorites by Natasha Nyon, Girls of Paper and Fire. Even signed because I just love it. Hold on. says to Ellie. Girls of Paper and Fire is a wonderful book um, in a wonderfully set world. I love the world building. I have an arc of Girls of Storm and Shadow and I just haven't read it yet because there's so many books I got from Y'all West and I really need to get on it. I do really love this book. I love the world building. I love the friendships. I love the relationships. I love how it speaks on hard and dark matters and brings them into the light and just yes, yes. Yes. I saw this book all over. It was on Bookstagram, Book Twitter, Booktube, Book anything, you name it, it was there. Best selling list, and so. And Natasha Nyan is just so nice. I saw her y'all was, and she was like, Hi, Allie. And I was like, You're a best selling author. You're not supposed to be remembering my name. So, yeah, I was really excited to meet her and really excited to have her sign this book. And just yes. So, Girls of Paper and Fire absolutely goes to the yes column. Okay. This is the last one, I promise you. I promise you. There's no more hidden surprises. Wait, actually, no, I'm kidding. The last book of the video is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. And I read this because I'm a huge fan of novel publishing, which is maybe the dorkiest thing I've ever said. Probably not. I say a lot of dorky things. But I'm a huge fan of novel publishing, and I love the way that they run their house, and I love their social media, and they were so nice to invite me to their meet and greet at Y'all West, and so I read this book. It is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, and I've never read any of the other Holly Black novels except for this one and The Wicked King. I really love the world of building, and I really love the friendships in there, and just how everything, the plot unfolds in like ways you didn't even see. I am going to mark The Cruel Prince into the A column, which means the online book community list wins. <laughs> The hype is usually worth it based on the books that I have read and bought just from the online book community. You all win a prize of my affection. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. There is going to be another video coming out on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, I don't know, one of those two days. There is going to be another video and it is our Disney-a-thon, read-a-thon announcement video and it is going to be a video by four of us on four different channels so make sure to check in I am the leader of Team Tangled and you will be seeing me dressed up like a princess because I want to make sure to check in on Saturday Sunday whichever turn your notifications on so you know when it comes up and I will see you then time for me to make like a treat and leaf nature pages out Bye!